Let's do a quick intro for, for the YouTubes because I've been trying to be more YouTubery. Hello, we are working on electrical today, which is a bit of a mess. And while I was getting stream ready, Santa took the tiles off that back wall and he found another hidden electrical box. Uh, this was a counter outlet and got covered with tile. With tile which is a weird way to go about it. We want to get the switch that was here moved over to this outside of the wall here. And Unless we want it on the inside of the wall, I haven't really decided yet. Which cable is that switch? I don't know. Okay. We are going to try to get this brought in over here and make sure we have power to those outlets. Those were probably on a lamp switch and that's why we have the 14.3 here. So we're gonna to get to open those up and try to make sure that they are going to be just live. This, I want to have controlling another light up in the ceiling up here, and then I don't need those lamp switches. We also wanna get another light in at the front entryway because as much as we have natural light coming through now that we have the closet gone, it's not enough. It's still a bit dark, especially in the evening, which is when most people view a house or an apartment for showing. So you wanna be able to have them come in, turn on a switch and have it nice and bright where they come in. While Santa continues taking tile out, I start cutting out a swath of drywall. It'll get rid of most of the tile damaged material and also give me room to address the electrical shenanigans. Yeah. That's like two and a half inches into the wall of clean drywall. Well, we know which wall they did first then probably. That almost makes it seem like they boarded this wall before they framed that one. Yeah, well it could be. No, what do you... What? Does that look like a cutting blade? It can cut? No, that's a scraping blade. <laughs> that one, that's a metal blade. It still cuts. You destroy a $40 metal blade by running it through a material it's not meant for and it's slower. What? Cutting drywall with a metal blade is not going to wreck the blade. You don't know what it'll do. Okay, you gotta push this, this thing, goes that way. Yeah. There you go. Now, Santa, turn it around. There you go. Silly right-handed tools. You can put the blade in so the, the sharp is here or the sharp is here. When you're cutting down through things, you want the sharp on this side so you can hold it normally and work with the weight and let it go stuff, go through wood and stuff. When you're cutting on a flat surface, if you flip it over, you're much closer to have the sharp here so that you can do something like this and get a longer cut than if you're doing something like this, you have to be more on a harder angle. And you're more likely to damage things like studs that you don't want to damage in this case. What's well, a good story for a right-handed person? One of the reasons to be more careful here is we don't know if there's any goofy shenanigans happening with the plumbing. We hope that there isn't, but we don't know. So you gotta be careful to just be barely through yep, the drywall. That's what I'm trying. Working with Santa can be confusing. Sometimes he immediately understands all seven steps of a process without me telling him, which is pretty rare for anyone to be able to do. Other times he tries to cut drywall with a scraping tool, which no, cannot cut. And I'm really lucky for that, as seen in this clip here. Oh. All right, so that can get away from you in a hurry. The rest of this day doesn't make for good video because my only small camera was attached to cables and running the stream. So I didn't have anything I could get into any cinematic position for YouTube. Maybe on the next project, I can dedicate a better portion of a day to some details on how to fish cables through really awkward places. I had to take a bit of a break from electrical to finally take care of the plumbing shutoffs. All of the shutoffs in my apartments were basically seized and that meant that I couldn't change out faucets, let alone cabinets and showers. The only way to deal with that was to have the entire building shut off on a scheduled day for just a few hours to let me remove everything and replace it with all new shutoffs. I tried to get some angles that were at least interesting for the stream but couldn't take the time to do a full this is how you do for the three different ways that I dealt with the shutoffs. In the bathroom, the shutoffs under the vanity controlled the vanity and the shower, and since I was going to be rerunning all the plumbing for the shower, I wanted to switch everything over to PEX. It's so much easier, and faster, and cheaper, and better, and easier. So I sweated on two copper to PEX fittings, and was able to clamp two inline PEX shutoffs on. 
The laundry shutoffs got new sweat on valves. They were the most accessible and easiest for me to do that on. Plumbing with fire in cramped areas is not my idea of a fun time. I had to reflow the solder on the kitchen pipes because I didn't have paper towel when I first removed the valves. Now with the paper towel, I could wipe the excess solder off before cleaning. So in the last area, the most cramped, under the kitchen sink, I used a couple of compression fittings. I'm not satisfied with this type of valve, but if I use this valve that I've had in my plumbing bucket for like 10 years, then I can return the ones that I bought that are like this one, which are the quarter turn, this off and on, and that'll save me 20 bucks. It should still function about the same. Yes, I definitely cheaped out a bit with this valve, but it's still brand new and does work perfectly. So in a condo that will max out at 250,000 at sale, saving 20 bucks here and there is a pretty good plan. If you've never used PEX before, this is not a crash course, but this gives you an idea of how easy it is. So you just take your fitting, you put it in, it's got these little tabs, you make sure that the pipe goes all the way up to the tabs and then you put the ring on and you make sure the ring goes up to the tabs and then you just clamp it. I like the clamps versus the crimps because they're cheaper, they get into tighter spaces and that is more convenient for my life. The crimps, you have to check to make sure every crimp is good. I've never heard of anyone coming along with a tool and saying, is the clamp any good? I don't know what kind of plastic the tubes are made out of. They're plastic and they're tubes. One of the things I do when I don't know something, usually, is look it up. I didn't do that while I was working because I was on a deadline. PEX is made of cross-linked HDPE, high-density polyethylene, and you can think of polyethylene as another word for plastic since there are lots of flavors of it and it makes up about one-third of all plastics in the world. You can go down the what is polyethylene rabbit hole, but you're going to run into a lot of chemical names and generalities. One of the things I really like about PEX is even once it's clamped in, you can still turn it. And that turn is not ruining the joint. These ones I'm a little bit unsure about because they were vertical solders and those can always be a bit tricky. <laughs> oh, that's a lovely color. <laughs> Your heart is fully on. Looks like I still know how to sweat a, a copper line. We're good. Awesome, dude. All right, thank you so much. The rest of the day was spent running cable, which isn't much fun to watch if I'm not giving good explanations as I go, but I did it, and now it's done.